Hello everyone, it's Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. I have a crazy gadget for you today. Uh, this is what it looks like. Stay tuned. He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great southwest... Here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Don Bain, and of course, I am your friendly Gadget Professor. I'd like to welcome everyone. We're on episode, if you look at the Gadget Professor page, 212. We are plugging along there. We have a great show for you tonight a lot of stuff going on in addition to uh, looking around where's our gadget in addition to this crazy gadget uh, I will also show you attempt to show you how you replace your battery in your power supply protector uh, I need to replace mine uh, it was hit by I believe lightning or a power surge and it just knocked this thing right out and with that went my computer and my internet and we'll talk about that in a little while so uh, stay tuned if you want to see how to change a, uh, a battery in uh, one of these expensive power supplies because I'm going to do that for you live. If you're new to The Gadget Professor, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. The easiest way to watch The Gadget Professor is probably subscribe to iTunes, or you can just go to our webpage, thegadgetprofessor.com. And uh, if you're on The Gadget Professor page on the right-hand side, if you scroll down just a little bit, about halfway, you'll see uh, important pages, the newsletter right there. Put in your newsletter. Yeah, put in your newsletter. I'm going to send you the <laughs> newsletter every Thursday evening as soon as the episode is posted because that's when the new episodes go up. Uh, if you have your email address in where it says newsletter, you will automatically get the free newsletter. And what that is is it's a, uh, a synopsis of everything that we talked about during the show. And it's hot link, so uh, anything that we discuss, you just click on the hot link and boom, there you got it. So that's pretty easy. You can also email me. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I love to get email and I answer it as quickly as I possibly can. And that's really simply just go to thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com, thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com, and I will answer all your emails. Now, we also have a great Facebook page, and I'm just starting to uh, work on that this week to add a lot of photos and things. And if you'd like to uh, follow us on Facebook and like us, I would love that. Uh, it's uh, Facebook forward slash Gadget Professor. And then, of course, uh, last but not least, we have our Rebel Mouse page. Rebel Mouse page, as you all know, is one of my favorite pages. And uh, essentially, we are on Twitter constantly. And I must tweet, uh, or people that help me do this, uh, tweet probably 60, 70 times, maybe 100 times a day. If you follow me on Twitter, which would be at Gadget Professor, at Gadget Professor, if you follow me at Gadget Professor on Twitter, uh, you will learn about every single new gadget that comes out by the hour. And if you go to our Rebel Mouse page, which is Rebel Mouse forward slash Gadget Professor, you will see everything that's come out in the last half hour. And this constantly changes. It's dynamic. So you can go back here several times a day, and you'll see that things have changed as they should. And uh, I even go to this page several times a day to see if there's something that's cool, that's new, or something that I want to cover for you. So definitely check out our, our Rebel Mouse page. It's really nice. Now, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff to cover today. Let's get right into it. Uh, yesterday was a hacking field day, at least in my opinion it was. Uh, yesterday, the question is, was United Airlines and the New York Stock Exchange and the Wall Street Journal, were they all hacked? And everybody is saying, no, 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 no. I'm saying probably. And, uh, you know, who am I to say that? Well, it's just too coincidental that United Airlines and New York Stock Exchange and the Wall Street Journal would all go down around the same time. There are a number of articles that you can read about this, but as I have been saying for the last three years, and I was probably one of the first guys to jump on this bandwagon, is that the hacking today, it's not if you're going to get hacked, it's when you're going to get hacked, and it's not even when you're going to get hacked, it's what are you going to do about it when you are hacked? Do you have backup? So these are things that uh, I try to deal with as best I can. I don't tell you these stories to scare you, but I try to, to tell, you, uh, tell you about them so that you could take precautions and have the proper backup that you need. So this one was just terrifying. Uh, you can read a lot of articles about it. And what was interesting to me is that uh, 
what they were saying, and again, I don't know if it's true, that uh, the Wall Street Journal went down because once the stock market went down, everybody was going to the Wall Street Journal website to see if uh, uh, they could figure out why it went down, and they had so many people hitting the Wall Street Journal that it went down, it had a denial of service. I don't know if that's true, but no one's coming out and saying that, yeah, this was a hacking attempt. Now, the truth of the matter is, what can they possibly say? Could you imagine the panic worldwide that would be caused by someone saying, particularly a security, a cybersecurity expert, getting on TV, getting on the media, and saying, yeah, my opinion, uh, the New York Stock Exchange was hacked, and uh, the Wall Street Journal was hacked, and also uh, United Airlines was hacked by one guy at the same time. Do you have any idea the, uh, the panic that would occur because of that? So I think they're being very tight-lipped and really playing it down. I have my own theory. I hope, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't know. Now, speaking about hacking, if you want to get a feel for what it's what, what it's really like out there second by second, if you want to know what, what the hacking looks like on a worldwide map, the Gadget Professor is going to show you a site right now. And this is called Map Norris Corporation. And Norris is a company that basically prides itself on following hacks. Now, I'm not making this up. This is a live, I'm on the internet now, and you are seeing hacks happening by the second. And if you look on the bottom of the page, which would be right here, you could see attack origins, so where the attacks have originated from, what types of hacks, because there's different types of hacks. You can shut down a website, you can penetrate a website, you can, uh, uh, there's all different ways that you can hack in to a, a computer system, a network. Uh, who are the targets? And you'll see, oddly enough, uh, number one target in the world happens to be the United States. How about that? The second one happens to be Russia. The third one happens to be the Philippines. That's going to give you a good idea as to who's good at hacking. They also show, uh, towards the right-hand side, the last column shows the live attacks. And it will even show you where is being attacked, the attacker's IP, the target geographically, the type of attack, and the port, the actual port that they're coming in on. So this is live. It's scary as hell. And uh, if you want to really get a, a chill out of, out of life, man, and see what's going on in the, in the world of hacking, uh, check this out. And I will point out to you that if you watch this for even 15 seconds, uh, the United States, where I'm sitting, is right now on the left side of the map. And uh, Europe, uh, Russia, Asia, they're all on my right side of my map. And you will notice, you can just see it right now, that all the bullets and targets are going in one direction from uh, uh, actually towards the United States. And I'm not making this up. You can decide for yourself. But this is a real fascinating piece of uh, electronic engineering. And uh, I think you'll really uh, get an appreciation for what a dangerous society we actually, we actually live in. And uh, the truth of the matter is... Uh, uh, there are foreign governments that in 10 seconds can shut the entire United States down. And that's, that's my firm belief, uh, as is evidenced, I think, by yesterday's attacking uh, attempts. But we'll just leave it at that. In any event, uh, this page, map.norriscorp.com, is something you'll, you'll, you'll want to check out. And it's really a well-done page. You can, uh, you can blow things up. You can actually... Uh, center in on a particular area if you want. You can move this around. So it's a, it's a very versatile tool, and uh, I think it will really bring to light just what the heck is going on. So, okay, enough about that. Let's, let's try to have some fun anyway while we can. I'm constantly asked uh, by a lot of people, both uh, that I meet personally and also uh, via email, uh, what what server do you use? You know, what do you put your family movies on? Uh, what do you put your photographs on uh, to share them? Well, uh, I myself, uh, I have an elaborate system that someday I'll show you. It's underneath my desk here, and uh, it's pretty messy, which is why, actually, it's very messy, which is why I won't show it to you now. Maybe I won't show it to you ever, but I use a thing called Plex, P-L-E-X, and that's worked so well for me for many years, and uh, they're always updating it, and I really enjoy it. It's not that complex to sit to set up. Uh, however, that said, uh, there's another server out there that's totally free. It's called Kodi, K-O-D-I, 
And this is available as a native application for the Android, Linux, the Mac OS, iOS, uh, iDevices, Apple TV 2, and Windows. So uh, this is pretty simple to set up. So if you have uh, you know, movies from your DVD that you've purchased that you own, uh, family movies, photographs, uh, soundtracks, music, wh whatever, uh, you can implement uh, this Kodi server. It's pretty easy to put together. There's a lot of uh, help online if you want to partake of that and this is uh, something that I would recommend it does a nice job and it's pretty uh, pretty solid in terms of uh, you know working it doesn't it's not flaky another uh, freebie that we have today is uh, I'm always looking for a calculator now I've been using this for quite some time they just updated it. it's totally free this calculator is available for your Android system and your iOS uh, I just happen to have iTunes up uh, where you can actually download this again it's totally free but this is called Calculator Plus Free, the world's favorite calculator, and uh, they claim that this is the world's most famous calculator, most favorite calculator. This is a brand new edition, 4.8.5, so if you need a calculator, and it doesn't matter what your smartphone operating system is, if you're on the Droid or uh, you're using the Apple products, uh, definitely download this. It's totally free, and you will find that it will come in handy. If you can't ca calculate out how much you should give for a tip, this will do it for you, so check that out. All right. Uh, this is a question I had this week, and uh, I think a lot of people have the same problem, which is why I'm bringing it up. If you've had a computer for a while, if you have a laptop that you share with your kids or your spouse, whatever the case may be, inevitably you're going to end up with a lot of stuff on your computer that is duplicate files. Maybe you have a duplicate song, maybe you have a duplicate spreadsheet, whatever. And that takes up a lot of space, so every so often you want to clean that out. And it's a pain in the neck to go through and find out where the duplicate files are. This program is by Nursoft, and it's been out forever, and it works really well. It was, all, I think, in 2009, it's 2015, so it's always being updated. And this is an alternative to search for files and folders. Uh, this will work on Windows, excuse me, and uh, it's very easy to install. Basically, it will go through your machine and pull out all the duplicate files. And let's just say that you have two files that have different names, but they're the exact same file. This actually goes in and does a comparison and will figure out that, you know what, this is 565 uh, kilobytes and this one's 565 kilobytes and they test each one back and forth. It's the same file. They'll delete it. So very cool program. Uh, you'll want to check this out. You could also uh, use it on, uh, from a portable flash drive from a USB stick. So you might want to take a look at that if you're inclined to uh, be in the market for that type of a program. Now, this is a fantastic deal. It's so fantastic that it's sold out already and it may come back, it may not, but the reason I think it may come back is because it's still being posted. So what this is, is it's on Amazon, and it's the Netgear Nighthawk AC1900 dual band Wi-Fi gigabyte router, the R7000, plus, plus, you're going to get a one terabyte portable Toshiba drive, which you can see right here on the right-hand side. This initially sold for 270 bucks. And that was a pretty good deal, and it was on Prime, so it was free shipping. They're running a special on this for $170.50. If you need a router, this is a phenomenal router to get. It will definitely do your whole house. There's no question about that. And they're going to throw in a brand new one terabyte Toshiba hard drive. Uh, it's really good if you notice the star ratings. Uh, uh, the Netgear got four stars. The Toshiba drive got four and a half stars. So... They're high quality products. If you want to read about it a little bit more, just go on to Amazon or just uh, when you get the show notes, just click on the link and it will bring you to there. Again, it's not available now. It was available a couple days ago. I'm sure they sold out, but uh, I'm sh I, I think it's going to be back. If not, they would have never posted that. And it's had 20, uh, 2,841 reviews, so they're all good. So you know you're getting a good product. So I just thought I would mention that. Now, some people like to find stuff for free. I know I do. And here's a site that you can go on to. And you know what? You may, you may have lived in a prior state or moved or whatever, and you may have had left some money in an account somewhere or some property that you just didn't know you had. Maybe you're getting interest on something for 20 years, and uh, it might have been $5,000 that you left or a bond. Who knows? In any event, if you go to this place, Okay, it's unclaimed.org, and click on the state. 
that you want to check out, uh, I'll just ch click on Massachusetts here. Uh, what it will do is you're going to put in some questions that they have to ask you who you are. It's all legit. And uh, you will find out if you have some money or some unclaimed property. This is totally free. It's run by the government, totally legal. And they really want to return your lost property to you. And it may be a parent or a relative that had some things there that you just didn't know about. So it's free to check. And uh, you would be amazed uh, that you'll find things there. Uh, I, I found uh, a couple things there over the last two, three years. Uh, I had one account that I had closed out. Uh, and I, I guess I had left $25 in there. And it was like 30 years ago. And uh, I ended up with a couple hundred bucks somehow. I don't know how, but uh, I never got all the money out apparently. And uh, I found it on this particular site. So uh, check that out. Now, rolling right along, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, if you're going to use that that Cody server program, uh, I have this actually in the wrong place, this page, but uh, if you go to CNET, they actually have a basic guide on how to build your own media center, and it takes you through the whole process of what to do, what hardware to use, and it's, it's really good reading, no matter what type of server uh, that you want to set up within your home to play your media files, to create your own media center, this does a good job. It's an excellent read. And even if you're not using Kodi, if you're going to use Plex or some other platform, this runs through the basics of what you need to know to set up your own media server, and it does a great job on it. So you might want to check that out. All right, now, without any further ado, we are going to do an experiment of the day. Uh, this is live, so I don't know what's going to happen. But we have before us a battery backup. This happens to be made by Belkin with surge protection. So let's take a look at this. This is the puppy. It's pretty heavy. And I have several of these, not all Belkin, but I have three of these underneath my desk that I'm not going to show you. And why do I have these? Well, I have these because I'll just read you what it does. The 750 volt office series UPS, which is, stands for backup, offers protection for your computer against blackouts, brownouts, and I'll tell you the difference between those in a minute, and it features four battery backup outlets with surge protection and four surge only outlets. It supports USB connectivity and comes with a $75,000 connected equipment warranty and data recover warranty. With a capacity of 400 watts, this unit is geared towards entry-level computers and home electronics. The series also offers many features that will allow you to replace the battery for extended life of the product, automatic voltage regulation for line conditioning. Now, why do I use this? Well, as I said, I have actually four of them underneath my desk. And if they're all pretty much, they all pretty much work the same way. Uh, when I used to live in Massachusetts, we would have brownouts constantly. What's the difference between a brownout and a blackout? Well, a blackout is it's out. The power goes out. Black out. It's it. A brownout is the worst. Brownout is much worse than a blackout. A brownout is that the power goes off, but the relays down the road, if you will, keep clicking on and chattering. And what happens is your power surges. It goes on, and then it goes down, and it goes on, and it goes down, and it may go out or it may stay on. And if it goes on, you're saying, great, but what you don't realize is while that power is surging, once in a while you'll see the lights get really bright and then dim, and then it gets bright, and then it gets dim, and then it's like not quite as bright as it should be. That's a brownout. Brownouts play absolute havoc with your electronic devices. They will burn them out. They will shorten the lifespan. Uh, they're your worst enemy is a brownout. And these devices, these power supplies, these universal backup power supplies are designed to withstand these surges in electricity. And the good ones, the better ones, and I wouldn't buy one without it, has two things. Surge protection, which is critical, and that's what happens when those lights get real bright in your house and you know you're going to lose power or it starts getting real dim. When it gets real bright, you're having a surge, and that's why things get brighter. When it gets dim, it's not getting enough, enough electricity, and, the, and your units are sucking to get more, and it, it, it really plays havoc with the components, electronic components inside your electronics devices. So this power supply and all the other ones, backup power supplies that I have, have surge protection, and that's exactly what this did for me. 
when we were having a kind of a brownout, if you will, uh, the power surged up and down. It's the first time this has happened since I've been in Arizona. It's about 10 years now. But this did a great job of protecting those devices that were hooked into this. Now, why do I have three or four of them? Because I have a ton of stuff below. I have separate circuits below this desk. So each circuit, four separate circuits come in here. Each circuit has its own backup power supply. The next thing a power supply absolutely must have is line conditioning. And I can't emphasize that enough. What line conditioning is, is it will actually regulate the voltage that this puts out to your electronics. And what I'm saying in English is that if it needs more power, within a, within a regulated uh, voltage, of course, uh, this will supply it more power. If it needs less power, this will give it more power. So essentially, if it surges, it will block the surge. If it needs more power, it will give you more power to prevent the, the oscillating of the, of the electricity, which would essentially cause damage to your components. So a line conditioner essentially tries to keep 110 volts constant no matter what's going on. It tries. Sometimes it can't because you can't fool around with Mother Nature, and Mother Nature is much more powerful than this device. So what happened to, and by the way, you can put your uh, uh, USB things through this. Your, you can also put your phone lines. Some, some of them have a, a, an adapter for your television, uh, uh, your cable cord to come through. It just depends on what type you buy. But again, two things you want, surge protection, definite, and line conditioning, definite. The bigger the power supply, the more power it will produce, the more outlets it will pack. Now, this one happens to have four outlets, and let's take a look at that. So the outlets are on the back here, and you'll see four outlets. I think you'll see four outlets, and there's two slots of four outlets. So there's a bottom slot, and there's a top slot, and I had every, every plug, all eight plugs were in use. Now, if this thing should pop... Uh, the ones that are on the battery backup, and there's only four outlets on the battery backup, so in the battery backup, I plug in my computer, my CPU. I do not plug in my monitor because I don't care if my monitor goes out. There's not data in the, in the monitor. There's no storage system, so I'm not worried about the monitor going out. I don't care. So what I plug in here is definitely my computer. Definitely my backup drive is plugged into here. I also have a, um, a, a media center disc, which I don't want to go down if possible. That's plugged into here. And I also have another external drive. So all these are plugged in. Boom. Power comes to a, is subject to a giant lightning strike. My house wasn't hit by lightning, but something cracked. And the lights flickered and boom, out it went and then bang. It came back on so this actually popped the fuse inside of it and there's a breaker somewhere here oh here it is in the back this actually popped which I'm glad it did because nothing's gonna get through it and my gear is safe during that brownout this did the voltage regulation kept my gear safe but what happened is when this went out and I restarted it the four outlets that were here we go the four outlets that were on the back that were strictly battery dead. The outlets that are on all the time and not battery backup, they came right on. And the reason you want the battery backup, folks, is that my computer's in here, my hard drive's plugged into that, is that when the power goes out, they don't take the beating. They continue to go on. And then as this runs out of power and it knows it's going to die, it will shut those devices down automatically because of the circuitry that talks to the computer inside here. So I have a nice, safe shutdown, not a pull the plug shutdown or not a brownout shutdown. So uh, the battery was shot and nothing came up and uh, I was reflecting on it. I've had this battery for a long time. So we're gonna show you how to change the battery in this. This thing still works fine, but the four outlets with the battery is dead because right now there's no battery in it. So I don't know if you can see this, but basically there's a, a, a slot in here that I'm pulling out. And that's where your battery goes. And there's two connectors here, a red and a black. You don't want to cut those or mess with those. And somewhere here, uh, yeah, here's the old battery. This is the actual old battery that was in there. And there's a little piece of paper that's hanging out. It's actually tape. You just pull this out and this whole battery comes out. This weighs about five pounds. This is not a light battery because this battery is what's going to power my computer and power my backup drive. So it's got to be strong. 
So this is shot. I didn't even measure the voltage on it, but I know it's shot. So what I did, and again, this is live. I haven't even opened it up. I'm assuming this is what it is, is it's a replacement battery that I ordered. Instead of spending 170 bucks and getting a whole new power backup, I'm just going to replace the battery. So that's that. And uh, they've got this tape pretty good. We have our official military knife here. Yes, I've cut myself with this more than once. Ask my cousin Dennis. So we're going to open this up. I think I'm going to fold the knife down because, like I said, and here is the new battery right here. Nicely packaged. So this is an exact match. And uh, they had two plastic lug protectors right here, which just fell off, so they weren't really that great protectors. If you notice, this is red and black. It's, it's color-coded, so you can't make a mistake. And now what I'm going to do, if you can see this, is I'm going to take these, these clips and just slide them back on these two ends here, slip them right onto the battery lugs, and then slide the battery in. So hopefully you can see this. You want to orientate the battery the proper way so it slips in because you only have so much cord here. Here's the, we'll do the black one first. Okay, I guess you want to hold both the wires because they do fall down. Okay, here we go. So the black one goes in first. That went right on, and now we're going to put the red one, which is the positive. You don't want to mix those up. Okay, so if you can see that, they're both back on, and uh, that's all there is to it. I'm just going to slide that back in, and uh, we're pretty much done. And uh, I'm going to plug this back in, and uh, we'll be up and running. So that's how you replace the, uh, the battery in a backup power supply. Of course, you want to put back the hinge door. Don't want any mice to get in there. So that's how that works. And now, because this is such an action-packed show tonight, I'm going to talk about the gadget of the day. So let's go to the web page. Now, folks, I don't usually do this, but... Someone had given this to me. I don't know why. I think they had an extra one. And what this is, is the, yeah, you've seen them on TV. <laughs> and if you want to run the infomercial, this is called the car cane. The car cane. I don't make this up. But uh, if you want to get a little laugh, and, and that's okay, I don't mind a laugh, you can go on their website. Yeah, it's an infomercial. <sighs> Someone's got to do this. All right, so I'm not going to pain you and run this whole thing, but actually it does some interesting things. Uh, the first thing this I'll tell you is that it's really well made. It's steel, and it's not, uh, it's not a piece of junk in terms of construction. It's quite well made. And what this does is it will do two things. One, if you noticed right here, uh, there's a picture here and there's a picture here that this this part here the steel pointer if you will goes right into the door itself the side of the door not the door but the side of the door you'll notice that there and it slides in and giving you a grip to hold on to and you can push down and get out of the car so if you have any type of an injury and you need help getting out of the car this will certainly do that and it locks in pretty tight. I did try it. It doesn't wiggle or wiggle and things like that. So it, it does do a great job of that. Uh, two more things that it does that I think is, is really helpful. Uh, if you are in a car accident and you need to break the window, the windshield, or the glass, uh, your, your window, uh, you would just take this blunt instrument on this part and just smash it onto the, uh, the glass, and it will, it will shatter it. So uh, that's a handy thing to have. Hopefully no one will ever need to use it, but it's there. Additionally, uh, right here, uh, there's a razor. So if you find that you need to cut your seatbelt or get out of your seatbelt, and most people 
don't carry a knife and it's a horrible thing to be stuck in your car for a variety of reasons and you need to get out if you have the presence of mind and this is close by you can just slide your seat belt in this and it will just cut it in, in a second it's, it's very sharp and it's not a cheap razor I, I took my screwdriver and pound them on it. It's, again, it's well made. So uh, basically there's three functions. Uh, it will help you get out of the car door uh, because it's called the uh, car cane. Uh, secondly, if you need to puncture a hole in the windshield to smash it out or your window, uh, this will certainly do an excellent job of that. And last but not least, if you need to cut your seatbelt, uh, this will do that. So I know I have a lot of uh, people who watch the Gadget Professor who uh, have some types of handicaps this may not be a bad device for you to carry and then last but not least uh, they did think of everything well not quite everything but if you push this button here uh, you will see that uh, it becomes a fairly useful flashlight and if you don't have one uh, this is better than nothing so those are the uh, the basic four features that this will do uh, the price is uh, $19.95. No, I have never seen the infomercial. I don't know if you have to buy it by midnight, or I don't know if you buy one, you get one free, but I will put the web page up. And as I said, the reason I'm reviewing this is uh, when it was given to me, and I kind of laugh, but then as I started thinking about it, you know what, I don't have anything like this in my car. I don't, at this point in time, need help out of my car. I could still get in and out, but uh, I don't have anything in my car that will break the windshield or the window, which I think is a good idea. I certainly don't have anything that will uh, cut the seat belt. I think that's a very handy thing to have. And tell you the truth, I'm not even sure if I have a flashlight in my car. So, uh, hey, someone gave it to me. Uh, I got a flashlight now. I hope you enjoyed tonight's Gadget Professor show. I enjoyed bringing it to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tell a friend to tune into the Gadget Professor. If you don't like the show, we'll put them to sleep. You can take your pick. I'll see everybody next Thursday night. So long from the Gadget Professor.